This is The Express with Gary Allen, your 360-degree view of the world. Now, here's your host, Gary Allen. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to this edition of The Express. Uh, I will warn you up front, we don't know how long we may or may not be on the air. There are tornadic uh, possibilities in the area where the main station is for us here on TMV Cafe, but we will stay with you as long as we possibly can. So bear with us here if something happens that we do go off the air, just kind of, you know, saying ahead of time. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining us here. Uh, Randy, I know you're in the chat room and thank you so much. One of my faithful listeners, and I thank you so much, sir, for always joining us every week. Uh, for those of you that are new, this is uh, The Express with Gary Allen. Uh, it's a talk show. We try to bring you interesting guests every week, sort of an eclectic view of the world. Uh, for those of you that don't know anything about me but would like to know a little bit more, you can go onto my website, Gary Allen, A L A N, talkshow.com. That's Gary Allen, talkshow.com. And uh, for those of you that want to listen to some of my past shows, you can in there click on any one of the uh particular links it'll take you to my youtube channel it'll take you to some of the other podcast area uh, places where i place some of my shows and please go in there and if you're also on facebook and you see the little blue url when i say hey this show is available one of my past shows just click on it even if you're there for a minute or two and just enjoy it i do try to put things out on link uh, linkedin as well as facebook starting this next week coming up i'm going to put things out on facebook starting on friday or saturday to let everybody know what's going on this show will repeat itself on thursday night at 7 p.m on diversitybroadcastnetwork.com that's uh, our sister station run by our good friend renee who is just down here in florida enjoying a wonderful vacation also if you want to listen to any of the past shows uh, connected with tmv directly just go to tmvcafe.com Com. Go to the radio tab and the archives are there. You'll see the little square, not only for the Express, but for also uh, some of the other shows that we have here on uh, on the network. So uh, I hope uh, for all intents and purposes that kind of answers things. Gary Allen with you here on the Express. We have a real good show for you tonight. Before we get to that, though, <clears throat> I have sort of some sad news on a personal level. On Sunday evening, a gentleman that gave me a, a huge break in Hollywood. Uh, in a sense, Stephen Boschko passed away at the age of 74 years old. He was one of my um, teachers at Carnegie Mellon when I went there, and that I'm not going to get into it again, how I got there. It was kind of a long story, um, made short, and it was purely by accident. But uh, he was the producer of L.A. Law, Hill Street Blues, Doogie Howser, NYPD Blue. He made an awful lot of people a lot of money, the networks, as well as gave young actors – Break after break after break, as you can tell by the cast that he had on some of these shows. Um, I had the opportunity of doing some what they call five and under work on Hill Street, which kept my rent paid. And also I had the opportunity to work with some very good actors and watch and learn from them as I have throughout my life. So I would be remiss if I didn't offer my condolences to the family. Um, Stephen was one of those creative geniuses in Hollywood that would surely be missed uh, you can look it up online about Stephen. Uh, there's obituaries and there's uh, lineups of the different shows that he produced. Uh, he was just a really nice man. He was tough, but he was a really nice man and he was always fair and he gave everybody a, an opportunity to uh, to show and, and showcase what they did best and that was being an actor in an ensemble situation. He took the ensemble type of cast and turned it into what a lot of shows are today and NYPD Blue and uh, Hill Street Blues were the predecessors for a lot of the shows today that you see, uh, such as Law and & Order and uh, some of the other shows. My two favorites lately are Chicago Fire and uh, Chicago uh, PD, uh, which is uh, two shows that are done in my favorite city in the whole world, and that is Chicago, who I, where I spent a lot of years. So, uh, And Hill Street, by the way. Hill Street Blues was about Chicago, and there is a little street on the south side of Chicago called Hill Street. You go there early in the morning. You can get all your stereo equipment with all the serial numbers removed, and it's a very interesting place. I, that may have changed. It's been many, many years since I was in Chicago. We have a very interesting guest with us this evening. His name is uh, Randy McCluskey. Randy's been a friend of mine for a number of years. Uh, we met when I went into uh, where he worked to buy a brand-new computer. We've been friends ever since. 
Um, he's extremely knowledgeable. He likes to be known as the electronics and computer guy. Don't ask me, folks. It's his, it's his moniker, so I'm just flowing with it as Randy wants. And I know Randy has joined us. So, Randy, uh, welcome to The Express with Gary Allen. Gary, good evening. How are you today? Um, well, I'm doing well. <clears throat> My throat's a little clogged up, but uh, excuse me, I just want to get a little bit of water, but I'm fine. Um, Randy, let's let's talk before we get into uh, some of the computer stuff that I talked about online today that we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, computers for my generation were a new thing uh, when we went to high school. And you're not of my generation. You're you're a considerably younger man than I am. Um, computers were not anything that we had in high school. We didn't even have calculators. It was a pencil, a piece of paper, and your brain. That was your calculator for math class and everything else. And, uh, I mean, I don't know how kids don't pass with A's and B's since I guess during a test they can always use their – I don't know. I guess the teachers take away their phones or their, their phones are put away. But computers were not part of my generation. Where, how old were you when you first became aware of computers? Well, probably late uh, 1998, 2000, but we, I myself, I never had computers in uh, the school I, I went to. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. You know, so, yeah, right, right around the 2000 mark, you know, was pretty much when, when I first got it, you know, introduced to it. Um, yeah. I had been working a lot during those times, and I really didn't have a lot of time to spend on it, but... As soon as I got a hold of one, boy, right. oh boy, my life changed. Yeah, I'll that's, tell you what. That, yeah, that's what they all they all say. I, I didn't get one until later on in life. Uh, my ex-wife and other people that were in the advertising industry and those that worked in major corporations, of course, computers went to them first. And I guess the home PC and everything kind of came later for a lot of people. Um, but uh, but. What kind of a change? You say, well, oh boy, it made a change in your life. What kind of a change was that? Well, you know, you're, you're able to do a lot of things you can't do um, without it. In other words, you know, you don't need to go to the library anymore. You can just pretty much look up any information. If you're sitting here in front of your computer, you have a telephone call that comes in, you don't recognize it, you can look it up and see who it is, mm -hmm. you know, on and on and on. If you need to do any, any type of uh, work on the computer with, like, your office products, you know, you really didn't have that years ago either. Um, if you want to type a letter and you want to do it with some of the uh, office products, you can type it right away and looks good. Everything's straight. All the words are spelled properly, and boom, there it goes, you know. Yeah. So they, they've added a lot on to our lifestyle. I mean, look at it today. Uh, everywhere there's technology, everywhere the schools, computers, the library, computers, everywhere there's computers, and you can go in there and pretty much do anything you want. Our telephones are computers. Yeah. You know, yeah. 20 years ago, we didn't have that. No, so, that's true. You know, that's true. Yeah, it's interesting to be able to do whatever you want. You can pay your bills online. You can do whatever you want just quickly. You don't have to send off a check anymore. You can just pay it right away and get it done with. And it's sped up a lot of our lives. I think it was an, an excellent, just an unbelievable thing to happen to society to get that. Yes, but, and then, but then again, I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a minute because you and I have okay. talked about this uh, numerous times at, when we've had dinner together and stuff. I also think mm -hmm. there's the downside to it, and that is uh, how many times have you been out and you see people sitting across from each other and they're texting each other instead of actually talking to each other? I, I think yes. it's taken away a little bit of the interpersonal types of relationships that we normally would have had before we had all these sort of electronic mechanisms to supposedly make our lives a lot easier. Um, I, I think it's taken away that, 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 that ability for us to have a conversation with one another, which I, I really love. As you well know, I'm more of a conversationalist than I am getting online and having a conversation that way. Because number one, you can hear the inflection in my voice of how I'm sounding. You can't hear the inflection on my voice if I'm, or, or, or how I'm feeling if I'm typing it to you. So I think in a way it, it's kind of um, ended and ruined the interpersonal relationships that uh, even the young people today are not very good at communicating. And they're not very good, and, and you and I both have talked about this, with follow-through, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So just yeah. – just, 
just my just my insight uh, with that. Randy, let's get into um, let's get into something that I I, I want to talk about because it it's something that is going on throughout the world today. And uh, we just yes. I just saw an example of it about a week or so ago. Uh, I, I can't remember what major city it was, but a major city uh, was was held at bay until people paid ransom for because of ransomware getting on their computer and shutting down their systems, something that's been going on now for about five years or so. Talk about what it is and what we can do to prevent it. And why do businesses allow themselves to get caught up in all this? Well, the city you're talking about is Baltimore. And what actually happened was their 911 uh, dispatch system got infected with the ransomware. Um, ransomware uh, is very, very dangerous situation which all businesses face. Well, I'll, I'll go through what it is. It's, it's the type of malware that prevents or limits users from accessing their system by locking up the system screen or by locking up the user files unless a ransom is paid. Now, with the modernization and the crypto stuff and all that type of stuff, that even makes it more difficult because they're going to go ahead and send you a key. It's called a decrypt key. And if you don't go ahead and immediately do something about it, a lot of times they'll give you a amount of time. They'll say 12 hours, 24 hours. You need to pay it or we're going to just keep everything locked up. Mm -hmm. Here's the other side to that. They may go ahead and send you a key, a crypto key, which doesn't even work. So you'll go ahead and you'll pay the ransom and you'll, you'll lose your money. Yeah. So th th it's a very, very dangerous thing to have going on. And also, you probably heard last week that Boeing was hit by a WannaCry uh, right. a threat, a malware threat. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. a very big one. But anytime you get around something like a, a 911 system, a hospital, something that has to keep going, um, Many a times they'll just go ahead and they'll pay the ransom. Yeah. Uh, they can't. They can't wait. You know. Now, so, why? Why don't major corporations? And, and this has been going on for four or five years, Randy. Why don't major corporations take the time and the expense, which would be considerably less than what they would have to pay in the ransom, because they the ransom is usually fifty, sixty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars. Why don't they just back up all their systems with another computer? And and this way they're, they're not caught off guard. That's what one company did not long ago. Didn't pay the ransomware. They were back in operation within a few hours because they backed everything up. They got lucky. That's not going to be the norm. Um, it, let's look at an example like a hospital where you have just hundreds of computers on it, several mm -hmm. floors. Um, all you have to do is have one individual, and remember, you're at work, you know, you're in the work ethic, you're, you're working away, you're on the computer, you're just doing this, doing that, you check your email, right. you go ahead, you check your email, and then you've got a file that comes in that has your name on it, and you, you can figure that out, and it's from your manager's name, which remember now, everybody has Facebook, <laughs> everybody, right. you can look up and you can see people's names, so once they go ahead and they send that, it looks like it's an individualized thing. Somebody clicks on it, boom, it's infected. Now, it may not infect it immediately. Uh, it may take some time, but it can also infect over a period of time. Yeah. So this is a very dangerous thing. Uh, any type of file that you open, no matter what, my advice to anybody is to never open up an attachment. If you if there if it's possible at all to have somebody not send you something like that, mm -hmm. try not to do that. But any attachments well, or, or, that are open at any time. Well, yeah. or or make sure that the one that you open, like you know, when I'm I'm doing a business with uh, my my production guy in in North Carolina, and he sends things to me as an attachment or a file mm -hmm. as an attachment, I know him. And and he will he will email me in the body of the thing, Gary, this is what you ask for. And he has a name in there that we use as a code to know because we both have both fear that um, don't open anything. And I learned this early. You know, I mean, uh, you always uh, told me, Gary, never open up anything you don't recognize and be absolutely sure. And if someone has sent you something that you haven't heard from in a while, give that person a call. And yes. say, hey, did you yes. just send me an email? And if they say, yeah, 
And then you go, okay, okay, fine. I just wanted to be sure uh, because it, your computer, and I had that happen to me in, uh, in Las Vegas. I had it happen to me there. Uh, my computer got infected and I was dumb enough. I was kind of piddling around doing something and I was distracted and I clicked on something and bada bing, within 48 hours, I was in up the creek without a paddle. I know, and it can happen that quick. Here's another way to get ransomware. Um, you can visit a, a malicious or compromised website. Yes. If you're ever going on your computer and, and all of a sudden you go to a website and something pops up and says, this is an attack or this is a danger, get out of this website. Now, that, that doesn't mean going to a bad website. You know, that just means to go into a website that you're not – you haven't been to before or you're not sure or whatever, you can go there and you can have ransomware uh, delivered on that yeah. just by going there. Yeah. So there's several different ways of doing it. You know, it's not always opening up attachments. Yeah. Very, exactly. very careful. Very, be very careful of anything you do. I'm going to go a little off track because I know I have your questions in front of me that, that, that we're going to go over, but this is kind of in there. Um, okay. With what's going on with the Russians interfering with elections all over the world, not just in the United States, but all over the world, and and you know that as well as everybody else knows, the, you know, the cyber cyber espionage is what's going on. China's doing it, we're doing it, Russians are doing it, everybody's kind of doing it to one extent or another. Um, how easy is it for? the Russians to get in here and they could disable our entire grid system to shut down our electronics, shut down our electricity, our water system. Um, why aren't we better prepared? Why aren't other countries better prepared? You know, it's amazing because it's, it's very expensive to be prepared. And it seems like most people don't do anything until after the problem. Mm -hmm. um, the Russian thing, you know, they, they were talking about, I guess, buying a lot of ads and advertising and all that kind of thing. And if somebody clicks on an advertisement, something can be placed on a computer to look at everything that you've looked at. It, it goes back to a type of virus or a type of ransomware. There's more than one way to do it. Um, the interesting thing is any computer to somebody who's very aware of the business can sit down at a computer and, or even in long distance can be to, uh, in, inside of a computer within 15 seconds. Yeah. I, it's not I, that difficult. No, it's, it, it really, really isn't. Uh, many times I've called you up and said, Hey, um, what, what is this? I don't know, Gary, I'm not sitting in front of you and I'll explain it. And you go, well, let me look it up. And, and I'll tell you, Randy has been a major help to me, not only with, with, with a lot of different things with my computers, but he's really great. Randy McCluskey, he's with us here on the express Gary Allen with you on this wonderful Tuesday evening. As I said, at the beginning of the top of the program, if for some reason the program is interrupted, our main station, our main feed out of San Antonio may be going through uh, thunderstorms and there's a possibility of tornadoes. So if for some reason we get interrupted through this program, uh, we do apologize up front, but I wanted to make everybody aware of it. And uh, to any of you that have any questions for Randy, go on the chat room, uh, bring them up, and EW will send them on to me. Um, Randy, let's talk a little bit about someone who's just getting started. What do you prefer? I mean, I have a PC. Uh, I've always mm -hmm. had a PC, I, I, uh, although a lot of people say to me, I, gotta, I should go to Mac because of the different audio st uh, systems, as you well know, because uh, you've had to deal with me, uh, that I have in this computer. Uh, what do you, what's the preferred uh, uh, instrument of, of, of uh, is it the Mac or is it the Windows PC? Well, you know, that's been a debate going on for a really, really long time, um, the comparison between the two. There's really 11 things that you've got to look at when you're comparing both of them. I won't go into all 11, mm -hmm. but number one between the two, the Mac <laughs> has better security. That's number one. Um, pricing, uh, you can build a PC, Windows PC, or you, know, you can pay for an expensive Mac computer. Uh, the Mac, the bottom line on a Mac is for graphic designer photos. That's what you really use them for. Um, there's a lot of people out there that want to have the best thing, you know, yeah. um, they, they want to have something, Hey, I've got a Mac, you know, that type of thing. Um, 
the Macs are generally more expensive. I think everybody knows that. And the quality uh, is considered more stable and stylish. So whenever anyone ever asks me, uh, you know, advice as to which PC or Mac, you know, what should I buy? I always, I always ask them, what do you need it for? Mm-hmm. Because that's really important. If you're going to get the Mac do, and do the video, uh, the editing video and the graphic design, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to do that, get your Mac. But I'm pretty much everybody really doesn't use computers. They just browse, check emails, maybe do some word processing. You really don't need a, a, an expensive computer to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, Apple has always, always understood the need to sell good-looking technology. Whenever you look at an Apple computer, boy, it's stylish, it's colored, it looks nice. And that was even dating back to the original iMac. You know, they always wanted to have something that looked good. And, and that's important to people. That, that, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact is that if you want people to pay more money, then it needs to look good, perform, and in Apple's case, enhance your status. So a Mac is definitely more secure due to the fact there are very few viruses that can affect it, but it does happen. Uh, PCs need virus protection, and sometimes even that's not enough. Uh, Malware does exist on Macs, but it's very rare compared to your PCs. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line in anything, if you're doing uh, video editing or graphic design, definitely get a Mac. But if you're doing anything else, you really don't need to spend that kind of money. you can easily buy something a lot less money and and still enjoy life. There used to be an old adage when I first got going as far as uh, whether to get a PC or a Mac, and that was Mm -hmm. that a lot of the uh, software that was needed in Windows wasn't comparable or couldn't be used on Mac. Now, that has ceased since uh, that time. I mean, now the, that software is interchangeable and it's made for Mac. I mean, even when I bought the computer from you, uh, if I decided tomorrow to go ahead and buy a Mac, I, I have the Windows 10 that I can upload into a Mac, even even with the PC that I have. Talk about mm-hmm. the innovation of that and the crossover um, that's been going on as far as making it easier for people to understand uh, the quality of, of what they have and as well as uh, um, the, how, how they're compatible now with one another to a certain extent when it comes to certain parts of the software. Well, yeah, on the Mac, you can go ahead and you can run Windows on it. Um, that's no problem, but you can't do anything as far as a PC trying to run anything Mac in it. You know, uh, a Mac is an individual with its own browser and, you know, um, it, it's made specifically to be a Mac. You know, when somebody says, hey, you got a Mac, obviously they know everything's embedded in it and mm-hmm. you really can't do anything. I've talked to people before that have Macs that'll use them at work, but yet when they go home, they'll go ahead and go into a PC because they don't need a Mac at home because of what they're doing. Right. Um, it, it, it all goes exactly back to what you're doing in life as far as the computer that you're going to need. You know, that, that's, that's a pretty standard answer, but I think everyone will understand it. Yeah. Also, too, I know over the last few years, even though Mac and Windows will always have a PC available for customers mm-hmm. for home use, uh, laptops are becoming more and more popular. Uh, talk about that as far as uh, utilization. Now, in my case, a laptop, uh, I've got to be careful what I would buy or anybody that's in this in the recording business or voiceover business because not every PC has a uh, has a, uh, a sound card in it that you can hook up a microphone to or anything else. But talk about the advent of the laptops and where they're going as far as into the next century or so and as well as uh, a decade rather, not century, but decades. And uh, talk about the uh, tablets that go along with the Mac and the Windows PC. Yeah, actually, you know, when you're looking at a tablet, um, I'm sorry, when you're when you're looking, um, hold on just a second, when you're looking at anything like that, um, as far as a laptop, laptops are great things. That's really where it's at. You know, people are going to be using laptops forever, and they're just going to keep getting better and better and better. Um, I've seen laptops. Matter of fact, I went online today and I saw a laptop for nine thousand dollars, which I thought was unbelievable, and it was sold out. Um, very, very expensive. Um, yeah. but as far as desktops goes, desktops are really, you know, 
business things, but now pretty much everybody's going to a laptop, even, even that, because mm -hmm. you want the portability. The desktop doesn't give you that portability. Um, laptops are getting better literally year after year after year. And whatever you're going to be using it for, you know, like I've said before, um, the way to look at a, at a laptop is, am I going to be using this laptop uh, for this, what I'm doing this year and three, four or five years down the road. That's really important. So you don't have to keep yeah. buying and updating and updating, but you know, the, the, the Mac laptops, uh, stuff like that, you know, again, people love those things. You know, they're, I see them all over town, coffee shops and everything else. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, pe people generally love the laptop. Um, you, you can get them very inexpensive. You can go down to, you know, all the way down to about 350 and still get a fairly decent one with windows on it. Mm -hmm. But I, I never recommend going anything under about $600 for a laptop. And when you get around 600 and go on up to, let's say maybe a thousand bucks, you're in a very good range. Anything beyond that, mm -hmm. you're probably, you're doing something really, really good. You know, I mean, you're, 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 you're into whatever you're into, but, Right, right. Up in that range, you're really going to be into something like gaming or something like that. Does that kind well, of yeah, answer I, your question? Yeah, I mean that does. And and I'm, I'm before we move on to uh, some of the other technical parts of 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 the program here, uh, I, I just want to say that now I'm going to be buying a new laptop, not a new one, but a, a used one, a refurbished one, uh, for when I go into the studios at the radio station because all I need it for is to just get online and see what's going on while I'm on the air to keep up to date with for my listeners, et cetera, et cetera. That's all I need one for. So I can pick one up for 300 bucks, 250. And as long as it can do that, I don't care because I'm not going to receive my emails while I'm there. I get those at home, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the exception to the rule, depending upon what you want to use the laptop for, which also could be the tablets as well. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm being correct too, Randy, someone could go get the tablet, which is also like having a smaller version of the laptop. Mm -hmm. And tablets are really, really thin now, um, and they're really, really light. Tablets are definitely a good thing. Um, try to get something now, you know, 10-inch tablets five years ago used to be pretty popular, but I, I, that's pretty much moved up now to about a 12-inch tablet, right. and you can get some good stuff in it. Um, I, I've seen a lot of good tablets out there right now that the, the resolution on them are absolutely fantastic. So never, never think that a tablet isn't good. They're always getting better as time goes on. Okay. Absolutely. We're talking to Randy McCluskey. Uh, he's my computer and electronics expert, my friend. And uh, you're on the express with Gary Allen here. Uh, also one, two things, two things I want to get before we start getting into the meat and potatoes here. I said mm -hmm. in the uh, preview online, which I know you read on LinkedIn, uh, when someone is brand new to all this, um, they need to take classes to understand their computer to get the most out of it with the with their ability. And also, too, uh, they need to get, find someone in case something goes wrong with the computer. I know computers are under warranties, but there are some places, in my opinion, you need to stay away from. But I, I through trial and error, I found that out. But I recommend to anybody out there, and, and I know you do, too, that if you're going to go get a computer, even if you're just upgrading, maybe take a class, understand the computer that you have in front of you. I kind of learned on the run, and uh, it's been interesting nevertheless, but I think if you were to take a class or two on computers, you would learn to get the most out of the computer that you have. Do you agree with that, Randy? I do agree with it, and actually, you know, a lot of, we still, even though we still have the library systems out there, they actually have classes in several of your larger cities, well, they'll go ahead and they'll, they, they, they treat you for free. Come on in on a certain date, we'll teach you how to do this. Come on in on this date, we'll teach you how to do that. Um, YouTube is also a very good place to go ahead and look into something like how to, how to operate a computer. Because you can always, you know, shut down the video, walk away, get something to drink, come back and start it again and learn from it. Um, there are a lot of different blogs out there. There are a lot of different websites out there. Uh, a couple of them, Computer Weekly, uh, ComputerWorld.com uh, slash blogs. You can learn a lot from that site. Uh, PCWorld.com, you can learn a lot from that site. Um, another place to go and learn about computers, which would be the very bo the bottom line, the core of a computer, is go to your large stores that sell them online. 
Uh, go to Newegg.com. Go, go to TigerDirect.com and learn about what they are because they'll, they'll have stories. They'll have reviews. They'll tell you, oh, this is a good one. This is okay, but here's the problem that's going on. And you can always learn from everything that's available out there currently. Anybody, it doesn't matter what age you are. Mm-hmm. And, and, and don't fool yourself. Go on to Google and say, uh, training for computers, put that on Google in your city or your zip code and look and see what's available. Somebody may be doing it that, you know, we're not even aware of. Yeah. So and you I can always I, learn about it. I remember mm-hmm. when I came to you, when I needed to get a new computer, I said to you, Randy, this is my needs. This is what I do. This is what I need to do. I'm coming in in a couple of days to see you because you, you were off for a few days and uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's important for people to recognize if you're new to computers or if you're upgrading your computer to understand where you are, what you need, and you don't pay for what you don't need. Because nowadays, when you buy the operating system, all the software and everything doesn't come with it anymore like it did when computers first got going. All the, um, all the other stuff, and some of it you can get for free, you can download it. But I, I think it's important also to tell people too, Randy, know what your needs are. Don't pay for Mm -hmm. what you don't need that's just going to sit in your computer and you're not going to do anything with it. Because back in the old days, a lot of that stuff came in your computer and you never really used it, you know. Uh, So I think that's important as well. Oh, that's correct. You know, all that stuff that in the early days, you know, that stuff is long gone now. But, you know, uh, all those uh, makers of all those different products realized, hey, wait a minute, this stuff is really going to be big. We need to start charging for it, you know, and. Know what you want, know what you're going to be doing with it, and know, get an idea about how long you're going to be doing it so you don't have to overspend or underspend. You want quality. If you go out there, don't look to get the cheapest thing. And when I was working in a computer store, a lot of people would come in and just say, I want to get a cheap computer. Well, what are you going to be using it for? Well, I'm going to be doing this, this, and this, and this. And a couple of those things, you didn't want to have a cheap computer. You wanted to have quality. Right. So you really need to battle it down. Make a note. Make notes on exactly what you're going to be doing. If next time you go buy a computer and take it down to somebody who who knows something about computers that are down there, you know, not everybody's you know real up to it still, yeah. you know. But uh, with kids learning the computers now in school, that's that's getting a lot better. Absolutely. So know what you're getting and know what you need and 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 look into all the expenses of all these things because when you get down there, number one, you're you're going to probably want to have all the bloatware taken out of your computer if you don't know how to do that. You know, don't leave those files in there to to get all to screw up the computer later on. You got to get stuff out of there. You've got to put stuff in there. That can help you do that. Yeah. And that's the best thing about a computer store. If you've got one in your area, and I know, you know, your listeners are out all over the U.S. and the world uh, being online, that, you know, do your homework before you go and do anything. Don't just say, I've got to get a computer and go to the store. Bad way of doing it. All right. Let's move on to uh, something. We're going to skip over one one thing here on your, on your list of stuff you want to talk about. Uh, now okay. that the person has the computer. Now we have to be worried because it is no longer built into the system, although there is firewalls that are built into uh, most computers that that come. But let's talk about antivirus. Number one, uh, what does it cover now as compared to what it did cover years ago? And can you give us some recommendations on some antivirus that people might very well be aware of? And also, too, uh, one thing I will say before you get started is, uh, you never have enough of good antivirus. You can overload your computer with too much antivirus, but you have to be careful of the different types of antivirus you do because they all go after different things. And uh, mm-hmm. so with that said, I will let you go ahead and run with, uh, you know, antivirus, uh, talk about it, uh, recommend some things to the listeners. Uh, again, this is Randy McCluskey. The Electronics and Computer Guy, Gary Allen, with you on the Express here. Hope and thank you so much for joining us here tonight. And a reminder, in case we do get cut off with a storm, uh, we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. But anyway, let's talk about antivirus, Randy, and and what your recommendations are and and talk a little bit about it because you did earlier with malware. No problem. Um, As far as antivirus goes, uh, the companies will usually have three different picks for you. They'll have a standard They'll have a deluxe and they'll have a premium. Knowing what you need and knowing what you're going to be doing is important. But let's go back to the word antivirus to begin with. 
years ago, you know, antiviruses would come into your computer for free, you know, and you wouldn't have to worry about it for a year or so. Um, there's a lot of paid antiviruses out there. Antivirus covers anti-malware now, which it didn't years ago. So nowadays you can get it with the, with the anti-malware built right into it, which actually should have been done, and it's, it's really a better thing. Um, you know, it's computer software used to prevent, detect, and, remo and sometimes remove your malicious software. It all, all depends on what's going on. Um, it was originally uh, developed to detect and remove computer viruses, so it's grown since, you know, it started. Um, I had a computer before, and I went to uh, three different places, I'm sorry, 35 different sites, and I took Kapersky to it, and out of the 35 sites, Kapersky dis uh, discovered 35 completely that there were a problem on that site. Norton detected 33 of those, so they didn't detect two. Webroot detected all 35 also. Mm -hmm. So right now, Kapersky has been in a number one position for a long time. Now, remember, antivirus, you'll always have your favorites. You'll always have that one that, you know, I'm a Norton user. That's all I'll ever use. Mm -hmm. Don't let that block you. If, if there is a better antivirus out there, I'll tell you what, to move a, a virus these days right now can be anywhere from cheap $49 up to $150 to get it out of your system if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, the different types of uh, antivirus out there, of course, besides Kapersky, Norton, and Webroot would be ESET. That's a pretty good one. It's very fast and won't slow down your mm -hmm. uh, computer like Norton or Kapersky. Yeah. AVG, that was big for a long time. That's a pretty good one. Uh, mm -hmm. McAfee, Microsoft Security Essentials, which is freeware. Yes. That was started back in uh, 2009. <laughs> and that's what um, I have on Defender. my computer. That's what I have on my computer, mm -hmm. and it's really done a great job. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got people that, that basically say, you know, it, it's good. I've got no problems. You know, they don't even pay attention to it. It's not automatic, so they're not even going to worry. Mm -hmm. um, there's one out there that I haven't heard that I actually discovered today called Quick Heal, and it's a really, really expensive uh, antivirus. I, that one I got to look more into before I can really talk about it. Um, is there, Defender is, it, is also one. Mm -hmm. Randy, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Much like you were talking about expensive uh, computers, purchasing them, you don't need to necessarily get the highest end. You don't need to get the bottom, but somewhere in the middle. It, could that be the same as with antivirus as well? Um, because I, I, I'm not a big fan of McAvee. I'm not. I had it in my computer once. I didn't like it. I didn't like utilization of it. It just never seemed to work right for me. I've had Norton. It was okay, but it seemed to slow down my computer qu quite a bit. I mean, is mm -hmm. there is there one that, you know, I mean, each individual is going to be different, of course, but yeah. you don't necessarily need to get the high-end antivirus like you were just talking about the the one that you were just referring to uh talk about mm -hmm. that too uh, as far as you know what do you recommend what do you have in your computer uh actually i've got uh, microsoft security essentials just like um that. i'm yeah i'm running windows 7 pro uh that's all i need at this point um never had a virus um matter of fact when i look all the way back to 2002 I've never no. I've had a I've had a couple of interesting things, but they were easy to get out and easy to get rid of. So I really, as as far as the, the bumps in the road, I haven't had too many problems with anything. Um, I keep everything up to date, and that's the big thing. Um, along with malware, you know, make sure your antivirus is up to date if it includes malware in it. Um, if you can, if you want to do it manually, that's fine. If you want to do it automatically, that's fine. You can, you got to choice of doing it two different ways all the different things that the protection uh provide i mean different antiviruses will do different things again there's those three the standard the deluxe and the premium the premium is loaded down with everything and that can make your computer run a little bit slower than you want it to um remember anytime you load something in a computer and I always tell people, don't download music to your computer. Stop <laughs> downloading pictures to your computer. Uh, put it up in a cloud somewhere because things, anytime you add something to a computer, that computer has to read it, 
and it has to go through the, you know, the entire file and everything else. So that's going to slow it all down no matter what. Um, back up and restore on an antivirus. Some, some have online storage, um, on and on and on. Um, some have free tech support, 24-7, 365. Some of them will have your family protection. Um, some of them will have multi-device protection. So you, you might buy one instead of buying one for one computer. Maybe you want to buy it for five computers. Um, so on all the different things, the main thing that I would recommend if I was to say, what do you need? Go online, do your research on antivirus. You can go online and, and go to a place called Top, uh, type in Google, Top 10 Antivirus. Look through some quality sites. Look through sites that you've known. Uh, read your reviews on it. Look at how many stars it's holding to, to see to make sure that that's the one that you want. But always do reviews. And you can go to blogs also. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to a blog and do some research on that, just beyond the regular website that you can go to on like Google or something, that always helps. But everybody has their own on what they like. But if something comes out that's better and will protect you more in the long run, it's better to spend those few bucks than it is to, let's say, spend a hundred bucks or more to get that virus out of there. Yeah, and so, I also would I also would recommend uh, talking to your friends that have been working with and dealing with computers for a very long time. Now, if you're you've had a computer for five to seven to ten years, then you kind of have an idea what you want to do. But if you're new at it and you're you're coming up and you're 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 branching out a little bit, talk to your friends who've had computers, I suppose. And even wherever mm -hmm. you work, talk to the people at work and see what antivirus they use. Uh, you know, if it's been working for them and they don't have any problems, then you know, maybe look that way. Here's another thing too, Randy, that you and I've talked about many, many times. <clears throat> when I first got started with computers. I remember uh, one of my dear friends said, Gary, stay away from the X-rated stuff. That's where you'll get your viruses. Well, that may very well be true, but I've also talked to my friends who have children and they've gotten virus infections and Trojans from children's programming on the internet. So you just never know where it's coming from. Yeah, the big thing right now, I understand about the adult sites and all that, but the big thing right now actually is where uh, kids will click on anything. Kids love to push buttons. Um, so that's where all the focus is right now because you're not, the kids just aren't going to have the knowledge. If I go ahead and I, and I plant something on a kid's site mm -hmm. and that your child is five, six, seven, eight years old and says, Oh, I like that color or clicks on it or whatever, you know, it's going to invite something into the computer. Guess what? It can get as bad as if it plants something on your computer and you do banking on it, it can also empty your banking account. Mm -hmm. So you really got to be smart. Um, I don't let anybody touch the computer that I use. Uh, every time I have in the past, there's always been an issue or it started running strange or whatever. So keep, keep your computers to yourself as parents and buy your kids separate computers. You know, you just never know. If theirs goes down, you still got yours in the house. Don't let them use yours. Mm -hmm. That was a big problem also in the store where I used to have people coming in that had to have computers fixed. You know, I'd ask them, what happened? Well, I was letting my son or I was letting my daughter. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that kind of explains it. You know, it's not the kid's fault. The kid just doesn't know. You know, I, I understand that. But the focus right now of malware and virus and everything is on kids' sites. That's You're deep right now. We're talking to Randy McCluskey. He's the electronics and computer guy. I'm Gary Allen with the Express. Thank you so much for joining with us. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Wi-Fi router. I know you have the Wi-Fi extender in here, and you'll talk about that as well. Uh, what mm -hmm. is better for the home? I mean, I have everything hooked up to a box here uh, because of the company I'm with. But what, do, what, what is it for that uh, person? Do you recommend the Wi-Fi router, or do you recommend – uh, hooking up to the cable box of your uh, of your company that provides a television and phone or whatever in your house? It all depends on exactly what your individual situation is on that, because sometimes they have bigger boxes that hook up because maybe you'll have an entertainment center in the house. Mm -hmm. um, if you just have an everyday, ordinary Wi-Fi router, uh, mm -hmm. or let's say the wire coming into the house, the first thing it has to go to is the modem. On your bill, if you want to save five bucks, spend forty dollars or sixty dollars and buy a modem, and it'll pay it back itself back in six months or a year or whatever. 
Um, the router itself, routers are very, you know, they're very unusual items where it's always good to do research on it. Um, Asus holds, Asus, A-S-U-S, -S, holds the top three spots right now for routers. Uh, I checked that earlier today. Um, router ratings on Asus products are a 9 out of a 10. So for, you know, if, you, if you can, try to stay. They do put the quality in it. If I was to relate it to another product in your house, it would be like a Samsung TV, highest quality product there is. Right. You know, so you, de you definitely want to buy quality no matter what or anything like that. Now, I did notice one thing out there that I haven't dealt with yet, but I did some research on it. Mm -hmm. um, Google Wi-Fi right now, uh, the interesting thing is they're, they're, they've started using something called a mesh Wi-Fi. Um, the principle behind the whole thing is you're going to be transmitting a number of bits in the smallest number of microseconds that you can to try to do it. Well, what happens with the mesh Wi-Fi is it goes around the whole house to all your mesh products. Here's the problem that the majority of people probably haven't looked up or don't know. That's a new Wi-Fi that's been put out. Um, my recommendation to you at this point, it's an unproven thing. I probably wouldn't use it yet. Here's why. If for some reason, firms like D-Link, Linksys, Netgear, TP-Link, you know, all these places are using that mesh uh, networking hardware. Mm -hmm. And if the products don't make a profit, here's the problem. Let's say they stop uh, supporting those individual pieces of hardware. Well, you may not get technical support anymore. You will get lack of warranty coverage because they're not using it anymore. If the companies for some reason go out of business or something like that, you're not going to have any place to go and repair that. There's no way uh, to purchase new units to expand the unit or expand your network. So if they stop using them, um, so at this point, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be using too many of mesh Wi-Fi. Stick with your standard Wi-Fi. Give the mesh Wi-Fi maybe three to five more years before you even start thinking about it. Wi-Fi is a great thing. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that without it, we're not going to get, we're not going to get any wireless in our house. You know, that's the bottom line. Yeah. So if you're, yeah. if you want a larger house, these days, try to get a Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, try to get a router that has the AC in it. Um, the AC itself is, is the latest stuff that's out there, mm -hmm. and it's the fastest. So that would probably be your, your best one to use at this point. Yeah, I know without Wi-Fi, a lot of people, they take their laptops and they go to coffee houses and stuff. And without Wi-Fi, I guess they would be pretty much uh, lost. Um, let's talk a little bit about something I've just recently heard about. And, you know, it could have been out there for the last 20 years, but if I just recently heard about it, you know why, because I'm not exactly a computer genius. Uh, let's talk yeah. about uh, VPN, Virtual Private Network. What is it? How does it work? And is it accessible to everyone? Uh, it is. And there's a lot of companies out there that uh, will actually let you use that. Um, let's go into what a VPN is. Obviously, you mentioned it's a vir virtual private network. Okay, so you have a group of computers, and you can use all those computers discre discreetly in an area. That pretty much describes it. Um, you network together over a public network, namely the Internet. And, you know, everybody obviously uses the Internet. Uh, businesses use VPN uh, to connect to, I'm sorry, to connect remote uh, data centers. And individuals now can use VPNs to get access to networks resources when they're not physically on the same LAN, and of course your LAN is local area network, um, to keep everything encrypted. What you're trying to do, if you're on an encrypted network, you're going to have, you, you're going to have problems. Uh, you, you have hackers. Uh, you, you know, you have, I'll, I'll, I'll just say spies for lack of a better word at this second. But what you're trying to do with a VPN is you're trying to cloak your computer's IP address. So you're going to be making it harder for advertisers, hackers, and everything else to track you online. Um, the one thing that people are going to now 
the problem with VPNs is your smart home devices now, like light bulbs and refrigerators, yeah, you can go out there now and get a Wi-Fi refrigerator. Well, the VPNs won't really work very good on something like that. So you're going to have to pretty much keep it within the computers that are in tablets and phones that are in the house. The smart, the smart uh, stuff right now is not working with it, none of the smart devices. Okay. Um, some of the routers right now, and this has been going on, are pre-installed with the VPN software. So you'll be able to uh, have it already built in for you, or you can actually go out on Google and find the best one that will work for you. It's really good. Um, using a VPN will probably slow down your surfing on the Internet. Um, so always looking for the fastest VPN. Right now, the fastest one is known as Pure VPN. Um, it is, has the fastest upload and download time. So mm -hmm. if you want to keep anything in a network that's away from hackers, that's away from other people that you're worried about, that's away from advertisers, you can use a VPN network, but make sure that you get the fastest VPN you can. Well, oh, that's interesting. Let's move on here. Uh, we've got about nine yeah. minutes left to go in the, uh, in the program. My cat, uh, Princess, has joined us here. And she's listening to every, every word. Um, um, when you're going to buy a computer, and, and most people are going to buy a computer, and at the same time, they're going to buy a printer. I was lucky enough, you guys gave me a free printer, which I still use to this very day. Number one, uh, printers don't necessarily last very long. You and I have talked about this before. I think in the last 10 years, I've gone through three printers. Um, yeah. They generally last to what about four years, maybe five at the most, depending upon yeah. how often. And in my case, I use it every week uh, to download all the information for my guests. So, talk about the ideal printers. You don't need this gigantic IBM thing that that costs fifteen hundred dollars. But talk about some of the good printers out there, and and all in one printers, which are, are the best utilization that you can spend your money on. It is. Even with all-in-one printers, not everybody faxes these days. Um, so, you know, if it's built in and that's part of the all-in-one situation, um, you probably aren't going to need the fax part of it. There's inkjet computers. Uh, there's color printers, which is all, can also be the inkjet. There's laser computers. There's monochrome. Um, I'm sorry, computers. Laser printer. There's also monochrome uh, printers. Knowing what you're going to be doing with it uh, is, again, what you really need to be doing. If you're in a business and you've got to do some very high resolution, resolution stuff, like mm -hmm. printing uh, brochures and everything like that, you're going to probably want a laser computer because that's, that's going to give you the very best patterns. It's, going to, it's really going to do good for you. The average Joe, like you and myself, inkjet, that's all we need. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just not print any color at all, Go ahead and just get a black and white called a monochrome printer, um, which is great because now you don't have any colors. You just have to go basically go up to the store at your office uh, depot or wherever you purchase your ink at, and you just need to buy one color. Um, you're right now today as of March 5th of 2018, um, Brother right now has three of the Amazon bestsellers that are out there right now online. Uh, Canon has two of them, Epson has one, and HP has two. All these were, are going to be between 99 bucks, let's call it 100 and 370 So anywhere in that area that you want to spend, you know, whatever your you know, budget is for, if, again, if you're just the average person, get your inkjet and don't spend a lot of money. Uh, a lot of people don't know that many times on your ink cartridges, on the inside of the ink cartridges, are filled with a sponge. Well, that's to dissipate the ink a little bit. If you actually dumped, and this is kind of like a little trivia thing, if you dumped a gallon of ink literally in a gallon bucket, the price of that ink would be approximately $8,000 a gallon. Most people don't know that. Ink is very expensive. Wow. Um, so nobody ever wants to overspend on anything if they can. No, um, my, my printer goes through black and white like crazy, and my color one is always the one that lags behind. Uh, and that's another thing too; you got to take into consideration whatever you buy. If you're if you're in a certain price range, <laughs> excuse me, 
uh, you know, how often are you going to have to replace the ink? I mean, for instance, how are you? I mean, like in my case, I probably will have to get a new printer in the next year, something that just pro primarily does black and white because I, I print out, as you well know, I've got files and files on every guest that I have. So you got to take that mm -hmm. into account as well. On color printers, the typical four cartridges are going to be cyan, uh, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the four colors you're always going to be using. Um, do your research, again, just like a computer, just like a tablet, just like anything you're going to be using. Go online, do your research, go on to the different stores like Amazon or wherever you, you know, whatever, whichever site you go to the most. Read your reviews, see what people are saying, find out the ink numbers, and then take the ink numbers and go on back online and find out how much those cartridges are if it's not listed where you're looking at. Yeah. You know, ink is expensive. There's no doubt about it. But you know what? That's why they sell cheap uh, printers. You know, the yeah. majority of printers out there are nothing. Yeah. I remember five, six, seven years ago where you could buy a printer for $35. Uh, but the ink was uh, sixty, seventy dollars for a cartridge or whatever. Yeah. So it's 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 all about the ink. So make sure you do your research on any type of ink that goes to any printer you're purchasing. We've got a couple of minutes left here. We've been talking to Randy uh, McCluskey, who's a computer and electronics uh, guy. Uh, Gary Allen with you here on the Express, and I thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Uh, let's talk a little bit about something you and I have always talked about when I first bought my computer, and that is how long is 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 uh, Microsoft going to back Windows 7 before they don't anymore, and you'll have to go to 10 or or I mean 10 is supposed to be it, correct? I mean they're they're only going to make improvements to 10. There's not going to be Windows 11 or 12 or 13. It's just going to be improvements made on 10. Is is that not what's going on? And how much longer for those of us that are still using Windows 7 Pro? How much longer, how many more years do you think we have left where they're going to back it up with security? Actually, you know, if you go on uh, Microsoft, um, if you go on Microsoft website, uh, the last time I checked, they were going to back it up. It was either 2021 or 2022. And that's it. Then it'll be something like years ago when we had our XP. You know, well, what, what are we going to do? It's obvious we're just going to have to go on to 10 no matter what. Yeah. Um, you know, so something like that, you, you just, it's, it's all part of the deal. It's all the way it works. You know, everything has a beginning, everything has an end, especially in computers, tablets, and electronics. They're only built to last for so long. And I'm sorry, what was your other question? Uh, just, you know, uh, how, how, you know, you've always advised me to, uh, to always be careful about, like, going to uh, Windows 10, uh, until they have uh, worked out all the, the the bugs and everything, and stay with Windows uh, Seven. So, uh, right. do, you, do you think it's safe now for someone to go in and go ahead and uh, uh, work on uh, if you want to move up to Windows Ten? Yes. Yeah. To put it simply, they they you know the Windows Ten actually had a huge uh, upload no more than a few weeks ago, and your bugs normally whenever you get a Windows you're always going to have, there's something always going to be wrong with it. They're always going to have to try to fix it. With the amount of different things that are out there that, that it runs on, they have to repair it. So no matter what, I, I would safely say right now that you can go to 10 with no problem. There's still going to be updates to it. It's still going to be going on. Now, will they go on to uh, something called an 11, 12, 13? We'll never know. Um, they won't, they won't come back and tell us, but they have been saying that 10 it. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, yeah. They've been saying that for quite a while. Well, Randy, I just want to thank you so much. We've had a wonderful time with you tonight. The hour goes by quickly, particularly when we have a good guest and an interesting subject. And, uh, if people are interested, how can they get a hold of you? I know you're on LinkedIn, uh, Randy McCluskey. Mm -hmm. Uh, if people want yeah. to get a hold of you, how about your website or something like that? Yeah, if you want, just go on to LinkedIn um, and hook up with me. That's fine, uh, especially if you're in the computer industry. It'll be uh, Randy McCloskey, M-C-C-L-O-S-K-E-Y, at uh, Orlando, Florida. And you'll be able to find me there. And, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Feel free to contact me no matter what, and maybe we can start a relationship that will last a lifetime in, the, in our technology world. 
I know you and I have one. Uh, if it lasts a lifetime, in my case, I'm older, so it'll be short. But, Randy, <laughs> I just want to thank you so very much for taking the time to join us here on The Express. And uh, to all of you out there, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can learn about me on my website, Gary Allen, A-L-A-N, talkshow.com, youtube.com. We'll have this show on Thursday night as well. We'll re be repeated at 7 p.m. on Diversity Broadcast Network. You can go to my Facebook one, my Facebook two, and you can uh, catch up on what's going on, everything uh, uh, that, that that's happening as far as what shows are going on, where I'm placing my shows. If you go to my website, it has all the links there, and everything is great. Go to tmvcafe.com, go to the radio tab, and go into the archives. You can listen to my show as well as many, many, many others. Until next time, and we do have an interesting guest uh, for us next week, would you please do me a big favor and take care of yourselves and each other. Good night. You've been listening to The Express with Gary Allen. Join us here every Tuesday night at 10 for more captivating talk with Gary Allen. See you next time on The Express.